How to YouTube, TKE here again. Gonna bring you another short video review. Um, was at uh, a Target, I guess. I was scouting out for some new stuff, and this one kind of caught my eye. It was kind of weird. It's uh, a Me Jam Mini Mix. It's uh, well, it proposes to be some sort of um, mini turntable by which you can mix fresh, funky tracks, and uh, it's assuredly the um, technology used by such common rappers as Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent. Probably. Um, okay, made a mess trying to open the blister pack. Must always be careful. I ended up... I don't know if you can see that. Um, there you go, right there. That wound, I ended up getting that from opening the blister pack on the PSP Slim and Light, so that's bullshit. Alright, I'll get to the plan in a second. On the inside, it came with some paper. Okay. Um, you got some stickers here. For some reason, they decided that uh, I want you know, decals, and of course your instructions written on a uh, large sheet of toilet paper. They're quite helpful, I guess. Um, at least they're written in good English. And I also have here with me my old Sony MP3 player, my, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's a mm, mini disc player, that's it, or a uh, UMD device, and uh, for crammage. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a second, and I'll tell you why. Here's the actual device itself. It's supposed to be able to, you know, make a lot of sounds and mix stuff, and it has, like, one large little speaker kind of... It's like one little, you know, uh, a round headphone-esque speaker just kind of coming out of that thing. You can detach it, but ironically, it does not have a normal headphone jack that may look normal, but believe it or not, it can only work with something like this, and it would never work with your average MP3 players or music devices. Okay. You have a little on-off switch down here, some headphone jack area, yeah, like a little lanyard key, which I think is just hilarious. It's just absolutely hilarious. Um, turn it on. Okay, it starts to glow red when you do that. Obviously, these are supposed to represent like records, and they're supposed to be touch-sensitive, which is kind of interesting. Okay, you can hit the beat button and lay down a funky track. Awesome! Okay. Turn off. Okay, you can up, you, well, when you've got the beat going, you can turn the tempo up or down, volume up, volume down, there you go, and especially you have digital sound effects, like that, just the two apparently, um, and you're supposed to be able to scratch these records, now, I have to use my thumbnail and my index nail, and it's not that, there you go, easy. Yeah, and then this one sounds like that. Okay, turn that off. Now, here's the interesting part. Supposedly, you're supposed to be able to, as you can see here on the box, got a little emblem, uh, looks like an iPod, uh, and of course it's supposed to be able, right there you can see, to plug into your media devices and make, I don't know, new tracks out of your songs, which is... Okay, you just take this little cord protruding out of the back of the device, a little headphone jack there, stick it in your headphone thing. I just wanted to show you guys how this works. I know you've seen, already seen my other MP3 players, so this is my old device. Now you turn this one on. So it should be coming through this speaker now, technically. Yep. This is Boston's More Than a Feeling. Let's find a different track. Um, here you go. This is I Had a Good Time. It was on uh, Boston's last album before the lead singer died, I think, just recently. It was called Corporate America. Actually, let's switch to that track, Corporate America. And we'll try to mix it up. Turn the sound up. Alright. Let's make this funky fresh. Um, I guess you can kind of tell by now that the truth is is that this little mixing thing, uh, when you put the music through it, obviously always makes a uh, terrible track, no matter what you do with these crappy pre-recorded sounds. <sighs> Let me see if I can back in there. 
And uh, there's no getting around that. Um, so there's no real reason to plug it in. Unless I guess you listen to rap music, which not to bang on the rap fans, but... Damn. Okay, it might sound good with that kind of music, but, um, well, not for my type of, uh, not for my tastes, anyway. Um, also, the other thing is that, uh, two things. One, the touch-sensitive, um, supposed keys really aren't that touch-sensitive, like you saw. I mean, I was just kidding. Um, you really have to scratch into it, and it's annoying. It really kind of makes your thumbnail sore, you know, like you're, uh, what's the word, filing it down. And you can't see, maybe if I... Well, you can't really see even in the light, but uh, it's really scratched, actually. And just from me running my thumbnail over it, it really gets scratched. And, of course, it takes... it's not really that responsive, of course, so, you know, you end up... Come on, come on, you scratch harder and scratch harder, and all of a sudden it's got, like, this massive gash in it. It kind of looks like what would happen if you took a key to the PSP. Actually, you know... There's a thought. Turn it on. Well, it... There we go. Okay, and... Here's my jackknife. Use this at work. No? There you go. Nothing. Come on. Come on. Like that. There you go. Anyway, you can't really get the sounds you want when you want, so... That's what it was like... 10 bucks, but... You know... Who cares? Just something fun to review on YouTube. If you ever see one of these, um... You should probably buy it and then promptly smash it. That would make a good video. Alright, that's all for me.